Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this example, we're going to be dealing with how we um, solve problems that have a change in phase. So let's go right through it. So we have 10 kilograms of R134A, that's Freon, and they fill a 1.115 meter cubed rigid container at an initial temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius. The container is then heated until the pressure is 200 kilopascals. Okay, we're going to determine the final temperature and the initial pressure. We're going to have to use the steam tables. Now, the big thing is, if I draw my diagram like this, um, I'm going to run into one problem. Because I know my temperature, okay, this, let's say this is a TS diagram, or for our sake, a T specific volume diagram. Okay, now I could be, you know, we have a temperature that maybe that's the negative 30 degrees Celsius. We have a pressure um, at the final point. So, you know, we have some initial pressure. We have some final pressure of 200 kilopascals. But I don't know where I am in the left and right direction. Am I over here? Am I compressed liquid? Am I some sort of mixture? Am I superheated? What am I? And what am I going to be after that point? Well, we're going to need some other information to help us figure it out some other information to help us figure out. Now, as a note, this right here, um, actually as a note, we've been given that information. And like I said earlier, that's usually coming in the form of specific volume. So we're going to calculate specific volume and that's going to help us. And then we're going to go to the tables to figure out what we are. So let's go ahead and calculate specific volume and we can go from there. Okay. Delete all this. Got that right there. Now, let's see. So first off, specific volume is simply my volume divided by my mass, both of which are given. And so now I have a specific volume of 0.1115 meters cubed per kilogram. Now, before you can go any further in this problem, you're going to have to go to the tables normally. Like I give you all the information because, you know, magical teacher, but you're going to have to go to the tables to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull open the tables for you and we're going to see how that looks. So with some magical movie magic, Okay, here we are. Now, this is just the ebook. What I did is I went to Appendix 1, and we're working with refrigerant. So I'm going to go to, I know what the temperature is. We'll go to Table A11, because that's the temperature table. Now, it said it was negative 30 degrees Celsius. And so that's down here. Now, let me see if I can go ahead and screenshot. There we go. Capture full page. Glorious. So here is negative 30 degrees Celsius. And right here is my specific volumes for being negative 30 degrees Celsius. Now, our value for specific volume is 0.1115. And so here's the thing. If I have a specific volume that's somewhere between these two values, that means that I am going to be a saturated mixture. So this guy is in between it. It means it is somewhere in the middle. So just so we can see it again, this is my TV diagram. This value right here would be VF. This value right here would be VG. And since my value is somewhere here, that means I am going to be a saturated mixture to begin with. That's good. That's a little bit helpful. The second thing we need to figure out is, okay, um, well, you know, it says it increases it to 200 kilopascals at the end. Okay, so 200 kilopascals. Is it going to be, what is it then? We don't know. Well, we have a way of finding out. So what we're going to do is we're in the temperature table now. I'm going to go out of this one. And I want to go to the pressure table. I'm going to find 200 kilopascals. And I want to go ahead and share my screen again, or um, screenshot again. OK, so here is 200 kilopascals right there. And this is the specific volume for possibilities for 200 kilopascals. Now, we have a constant volume process. It's a container, the mass doesn't change, which means the specific volume is the same the entire time. So even after we increase in pressure, we're still gonna be at 0.1115 um, meters cubed per kilogram. Now, that is greater than my specific volume for a saturated vapor. Since it is greater, that means I am going to be superheated. And we're gonna to have to go to the superheated tables to find the last little step. 
Okay, so these are the steps you're going to have to follow. Now, the last thing I want to show you is what you would look at in the superheated tables, um, just to be able to give you all the information so I don't have to come back here later. I'm going to give you all that information as we go through, but I want you to see where I got it from. Okay, so we're going to go to one more table. You're like, wow, three different tables for one problem? That's actually pretty normal, um, but they're not meant to be hard to look at. Okay, so here's the last one. I have to find 200 kilopascals, which be very, very careful. That is the same as 0.2 megapascals. And just so you know, the first column in any of these little blocks is my specific volume. Okay, so let's go ahead and once again, I'm going to capture my screen. And here we are. So I have 0.2 megapascals because it's 200 kilopascals right there. And I said I have a specific volume of 0.115. So this column right here, that's the specific volume column for this block. Like over here, that's the specific volume column. And so what I see is that I am somewhere in between these two values, okay? I'm at 0.115. I don't see a 0.115, sorry, 0.1115, goodness. I forgot one of the ones there. I'm right here. So I'm somewhere in between those two values. I have 0.1115. And so what I'm going to have to do then is I'm going to have to interpolate to find the information. So we'll do that later. You'll see it in just a minute. Don't worry about it too much. Okay, so I've shown you all the tables now, and with the power of movie magic, I'm going to now switch back to the problem. And we're back. Magic. How did he do that? I paused the recorder. <laughs> okay, so since we know everything about how the process looks, because we looked at the tables, we can go ahead and draw that process. And it looks something like this. It's a constant volume process, which so is a straight line up and down. Ah, they use a PV diagram. That's fine too. And um, I'm going from one state to another. I started as a saturated mixture. I went to a superheated vapor. Okay, now with that information, let's calculate everything else. Now, I want to find the final temperature and the initial pressure. Because that initial state is a saturated mixture, the Pressure is going to be equal to the saturation pressure. That's super easy. That's not hard at all. That's going to be 84.43 kilopascals. That's just that second column in the saturated mixture temperature table. Okay, now I need to find that um, final temperature. That one is harder because it's superheated. So when I go and I I'm looking at table A13 for superheated, I find that it's in between. And so what are we going to do? We're going to interpolate. How do we interpolate? We use my handy dandy works every single time interpolation equation. You are making an interpolation sandwich. You want to find temperature, you know specific volume, and so you go to that table, you find the data on the top, you find the data on the bottom for both of them, and you will have what you need to solve it. Now, because I'm just going to be completely crazy, I'm going to go ahead and show that to you right now. Okay, I'm going to go back to the superheated table and we're going to see that data just so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are again. I do apologize for jumping around so much. But I said T low and T high. In this case, T low would be 10, T high would be 20. So that's why I'm calling T low and T high. That's my sandwich. I know it's somewhere in between there and so that's my information. And then I have, make sure I'm pulling the right columns. Yes, right here. I have my specific volume low and specific volume high. The lows always go together. The highs always go together. You're just basing it on the row. You're naming a row high, you're naming a row low. And just so you know, my equation that I use for interpolation, it doesn't matter which one you call low, which one you call high. I can switch it and I will still get the exact same number. I just have to be consistent. I have to be consistent the entire time. So here, I'm somewhere in between here. I know this is 0.1115, and that's going to help me figure out what my temperature is, which is somewhere between 10 and 20. So as a note to yourself, you have a sandwich here. It's somewhere in between that sandwich. If you get something outside of that sandwich, something's gone wrong. So be careful not to get something outside that sandwich. <laughs> okay, jumping back to the problem now. Okay, now with that, I get all my information. I plug it into this equation. What do I get? I get that my temperature is equal to 14.2 degrees Celsius. So I'll just pop that out for you. Okay, so I hope this problem helps you because it really got went into detail about how we look at the tables, how we navigate those tables, and how we get information out of those tables. So thank you so much. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.